Hello Shrimp fam, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Uh, today I thought we'd take a look at my Super Crystal Reds because uh, there is a variation that's in there that's called Santa. Uh, I thought that would be a good thing for you to see, especially today of all days, so Merry Christmas. thought it would be a good idea, snowflakes with Santa Shrimp, blah 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 blah. You can see the different variations as well, we have quite a bit of baby shrimp in this tank. And guys, it is not even 2 o'clock and it's almost dark outside. Winter, huh? Who would have it? Not me. Alright guys, let's have a little look at my Super Crystal Red Shrimp tank down here. Right, we're going to go over what's in the tank, um, how it's set up, and uh, maintenance, all that kind of good stuff, right? Because uh, I think it's quite important to be quite thorough in your videos, right? So this is my Super Crystal Red Shrimp tank. These are actual shrimp that are derived from Crystal Red Shrimps. You can see they're all red here. I will, of course, put up some macro footage so you guys can see them even clearer. Um, and they're pretty nice, they're pretty wonderful to look at. I love the contrast in red against the dark soil. And um, over time, this tank will get filler, fuller and fuller, filler and filler, fuller and fuller. And uh, this tank is uh, what is just about six months old, five months old technically, since I started it. Right, so I think the shrimp have only been in here for about three months, three or four months at the very most. Let's just talk about the tank itself first. It is uh, about 50 litres. This is an Aqua L tank, 50 litre tank. It is uh, filtered by two sponge filters here and an Asian style under gravel filter here, which I will make a video of me making um, in the future. The only thing I've done wrong with this under gravel filter here, guys, is I've put stuff in the bottom here. You can see all the way to the bottom and ideally you want a, a gap right so that's one little mistake that I did here and um, the rest of the tank is just filled with plants ideally again you want lots of plants little bits of wood moss have some bits of philandra you always want to have some leaf matter in the tank this is an oak leaf and the one at the back is a uh, black walnut maybe black walnut leaf you can see the Ziggy Zag spikes in it. This one's very large. Thank you to David and Scotland for sending me these leaves. A little bit of wood. Lots of little ceramic rings. As I said. Um, Searching oxidator when I remember to fill up. I don't know if this co will come out on camera, but there's like four or five little baby shrimp dead, dead centre of the screen. If I can get some macro footage of them as well, I'll put that up for you. Right, so onto the Super Crystal Reds themselves. Uh, the standard grade for Super Crystal Reds would be a red shrimp, a little white patch on the head, and a little white patch in the back. Right? So my Santas are more or less the grade above, which I actually don't know the name of. I've actually been Googling yesterday to try and find out the name of them, uh, but I just can't. I just can't find it. So uh, I'll show you these variations, as I said, with the macro fish. There's lots and lots of babies in this tank. All over the place. If you can look in the gravel, you'll see them crawling around. They're all in the sponge filters as well. Everywhere you look in here, there's baby shrimp. So this tank is going to be bursting at the seams. The, the food is snowflake shrimp food, as we talked about in the beginning. I like feeding this food occasionally. Because uh, the shrimp really seem to like it. Right? Once they've eaten some of it as well, the babies tend to congregate here. Which is really cool. Uh, all the moss that you can see attached here is is uh, just glued on with super glue. This super glue will eventually disappear and the rock will be covered. You can see I've done a few things up the top here. You can see I used thread on this one. This one was also thread. And that is more or less it. On to tank maintenance. Uh, did I mention the soil? I don't think I did. Uh, this is ADA powdered soil. Which I love. ADA soil is probably up there with like the the best soils that you can get for your shrimp tanks i think also guys because it's actually uh full of nutrients which make your plants really really grow well which makes quite a big difference with your shrimp because guys if you have lots and lots of plants in a tank they help to filter the the, the water naturally right so if you have lots of healthy plants like I do, you're going to have a healthy tank. Let me quickly show you the blue steel tank right next to it, just to give you an idea because it is a little bit fuller of plants, right? So you can see the difference. See how well the plants grow with the soil? This is a combination of ADA soil and uh, master soil and the little Asian style filter thing at the back. 
lots of hornwort, lots of hornwort. My God, I couldn't see it there. Again, shrimp all over the place. So this is a proven method that works. You see, I'm just copying myself here. Proven method that works. Up top here, we have a little bit more uh, duckweed and some red root floor. Red, red root floor gets its name from its lovely, lovely red roots, as you can see here. Hopefully I don't get too close with this uh, GoPro because I noticed it's not very good with the uh, focusing uh, around about the 20 centimeter mark. So that is this tank. I would expect guys with uh, the date on this tank that this tank will get even better within the next couple of months as you can see. I'll also show you some buried females here that will have uh, lots and lots of eggs as well. Now, one of the things I do notice that could be a potential problem in this tank is um, I have noticed just with filming today that some of these girls in here have a term called a short skirt which is... Uh, a shortening of the car pass above the legs right you guys will see it once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about um, in this tank specifically is it a problem no right because I won't sell these shrimp I wouldn't sell a shrimp that with a known issue with uh, short car pass like this I suggest you guys do the same if you notice it in your tanks please please don't sell them on they're okay if you're just going to keep them for yourself which I plan to do with this if I do give them to anyone um, I'll let them know that there was uh, short skirts in the mix as well, right? Because it'd be quite interesting to see if we could breed that out of this colony, right? Because this colony will grow. Not all of them have a short skirt, so I wonder if we remove all the short skirts, if eventually we'll have no shirts, short skirts in the colony. Can you imagine people watching this that don't really know much about shrimp and they're wondering, why is he talking about short skirts and filming prawns and... It's amazing, isn't it? Just weird, weird, weird. Right, so, uh, as I said, this tank was made on the 31st of 620. You can see I've done this with my tanks where I uh, date them. I suggest you do this as well because, guys, soils only last so long. And um, what I mean by that is they uh, can only buffer the soil for a certain amount of time. And once that buffering capacity is gone, the tank will certainly start to fail, right? You're, you'll notice things like uh, uh, algae starting to grow. This is one of the things you can notice with this, look, if I, if I come out a little bit. Loads of plants, hardly any algae, but there is biofilm in there. If I put my hand in and I feel the leaves and stuff, you can actually feel the biofilm. Right, so um, you want an active soil that is active, that's why it's called an active soil. You want it to pop buffer your pH. In this tank, I'll go over the basic uh, parameters as well right now just off the top of my head I know the pH on this one is definitely under 6 it's probably around about 5.5 most ADA soils are quite low in my experience um, I use a reverse osmosis water in this tank and I uh, buffer it with a buffer called salty mineral a GH buffer GH plus buffer and um, I make my water to a TDS of 125 for this tank. This is what I do with all my Caradina tanks. This is a Caradina tank as well. All beef shrimp are Caradina. Um, and I, I go to 125 parts per million TDS. But guys, I also use a thing called a conductivity meter. But I'm giving you the rough um, equivalent in TDS, right? So my... Uh, conductivity would be 250 US Siemens right and if you use a scale of 0 0.5 conversion you will get uh, one one two five parts per million TDS I know I'm blathering a little bit but I think it's important that you guys know this that when I mention stuff like TDS and things different people in different parts of the world might have a different reading because there is different conversion rates okay let me see if I missed anything Soaking oxidator in the middle. Soaking oxidators are great if you can remember to fill them up all the time. I don't always do, as you can see here. Uh, something I'm going to try this week, guys, just as a little bit of an experiment. Um, I'm actually, apart from today, I'm not going to feed the tank again this week. And we're going to see how the shrimp get on with just eating leaves and stuff, right? Because um, apart from water changes, I would say overfeeding is probably the biggest killer in a shrimp tank, right? So I just want to experiment a little bit with this tank and see if uh, if we can get away with feeding them more leaves 
Okay, so once this food is gone, big leaves at the back, stuff like this, because guys, you will notice this in this tank here. These leaves have actually been in here a little while. This leaf has been in here for a few weeks and it doesn't look touched at all. Same with the one at the back, right? And ideally you want the leaves to be um, half eaten away constantly, right? You want the, the shrimp to be eating the biofilm and stuff on it. Right, and it's not just a food source for them like you would think with uh, your bang average food. I was going to say snowflake there, but snowflake is a little bit different because it does actually form uh, mycelium on its shell. It's like uh, a growth medium. That's why snowflake food is so good. Um, it can actually grow biofilm on itself. Right, So the, the shrimp will be eating this stuff, but anything that's left, um, biofilm will grow on it as well. Right, so. That is what you want to happen with your leaves. You want them to start to get the biofilm built up over them. I mean, I have no doubts that there's probably uh, been lots and lots of biofilm over this. Maybe we can do that in a video one day, show you the difference in a tank with a, uh, where you have leaves with shrimp and something that doesn't have uh, shrimp in it, right? Because it's very noticeable, especially to the touch where uh, leaves become very slimy, right? If, if you don't have them in with shrimp. And that is because the shrimp will actually eat all the slime, the biofilm off the leaf, right? And biofilm is very, very important in a shrimp tank because uh, there's, there's actually sources of uh, sheatine in biofilm and other things. There's proteins uh, that shrimp require to basically function and live, right? So that's why I think they're really, really important in a shrimp tank. What do you think, guys? Is that a good enough video for today? Hope you all have a Merry Merry Christmas and uh, have a wonderful day with your families. Guys, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, have an awesome holiday all the same, right? And I'll see you all in the next one. Merry Christmas, guys. Love you all. Bye. Whoop.